Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. I'm gonna be showing you today how to get approved to sell on display.com. So as you guys can see, I have my account here that is approved already, it's opened, um, and I have the ability to upload artwork here and sell it. And I also have some posters here that I pre-made. So I kinda wanna show you guys, I've made these over the past few, I guess you could say years, I don't know, year. Um, but these are just some basic posters, nothing crazy about them. Uh, but these are just going to be as examples for the tutorial, okay? So I don't want you to try to make your posters seem like mine. That's not necessarily going to be approved, get you approved. Um, Displate actually only has one requirement to get your displays or your designs approved um, and to really just be approved into the marketplace. And what is that requirement? The requirement is you have to send them your online portfolio. Okay, so it's not like sending a few images. It used to be like that, you know, a while back, uh, where you could just send examples of your artwork. Uh, it's no longer like that. You have to actually send an online portfolio. So how do you do that? I'm gonna go ahead and show you everything associated with that today. Um, with that being said, uh, part of the ways of getting accepted or the highest chance of getting accepted into display is that when you actually do send your portfolio, you're going to show your artworks. Now, some of you might be saying, hold on, hold on, hold on. How do I actually send my portfolio? How do I even create a portfolio? Don't worry. I'll show you that. But um, as far as actually getting approved right on display and getting accepted into the platform, you have to be able to uh, create stuff that they accept, that they see that will work on their platform. If they don't see that your artwork is suitable for their platform, they're just not going to accept you, even if it's amazing. So you want to make sure that you fulfill all the requirements. Now, what are the requirements? It says here, make sure you are the owner of the artwork. Now, this is once again inside the uploader page. So if your artwork already falls in line with all of this, there's a much higher chance that you're going to get accepted. And these requirements are really, really simple. Don't worry, they're not hard to complete. It says, make sure your artworks don't infringe upon copyrights, moral rights, publicity rights, privacy rights, or any other rights of any other person or third party. So that's the first step. So if you have pictures of, for example, uh, the Hulk, and you don't have license to, to use it, um, that, you know, your own artwork, probably not a good idea to use it uh, because Marvel owns that, right? Here it says we have a zero tolerance policy regarding intellectual property rights of infringement. So once again, if you submit a portfolio, and once again, we'll show you how to build a portfolio, but if you submit a portfolio of things that you don't own, it's not going to work, right? If display is made aware that an artist has infringed copyright intellectual property, their account will be terminated, etc. Okay. Um, here, your artwork is high quality. So upload high quality images in a JPEG format. Okay. Uh, these files should be 2,900 by uh, 4,060, uh, which is a one to four uh, point one ratio, uh, go for a 300 DPI or more. It says, do not play. This is, this is the most important, important part. Do not place text or content close to the edge of the design. Do not add frames in the composition. So for example, if you have artwork, a frame in your artwork, take that out. It's not a good idea to have that. Um, do not place text or content close to the edge. So you might see in, in some of my samples, I might have that, um, let's see here if there's an example of that. Let's see. Um, trying to, yeah, this actually, this, this one got accepted, but I actually had to make this a little bit smaller. Um, this probably this, you know, I'd probably have to make the text a little bit smaller, make the images a little bit smaller so that they're not too close to the edge. Cause this is somewhat close to the edge. Um, this is decent. This is decent. Let's see. This is this is decent as well, so that's fine. Uh, it says, do not manually increase the pixel dimensions of the image. Guys, obviously, this should be 100% obvious by now, only upscale. If you don't know what upscaling is, just literally type in the word upscale on my YouTube channel. You'll see a ton of videos on it. Uh, do not add any filters to try to increase the quality of the images. So super simple, right? The most important too, obviously, other than having good quality images, is do not place text or content close to the edge and do not add frames. Um, other than that, they have to look at your actual 
quality of your portfolio. So let's go ahead and get that done now. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to create a portfolio. I'm going to show you how to put it all together so that when you guys do apply to display, you'll get approved. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into it. So I'm going to be going ahead and using Rocket Web Builder for this tutorial to go ahead and create a online portfolio. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to the templates button. Okay. And the templates button, there's various different templates. I'm just going to go for a website that is blank. So what rocket web builder is, is the place where you can build your own website. Okay. And in this case, a portfolio is a website. Okay. Right? So let's go ahead and hit start with this theme and I'm going to fill out this information, my name, my email, my password, so I can create an account and I can get started. So I'll be right back. Okay, guys, so I just created an account and I'm inside now and I'm going to give a name for the website. So I'll just call it portfolio, just like that. And what I'll do is I'll hit submit. And now what it's going to do is it's going to take me to that blank website. All right. So this is the blank website. There's literally nothing on there. There's no system pages. There's no or excuse me, there are system pages, but these are normal pages, right? They don't really count on in terms of your website. Um, but all we have is a home page. And this is where I'm going to create my portfolio. Uh, so I'm going to go over here and hit pages, I'm going to hit add new. And I have a few and notice here how I have a button that says portfolio, it's pre made for me. Okay. And this is a place where I can add pictures to my portfolio. In fact, since I already just created a portfolio page, I can preview this page by hitting this website preview button. And this is how it looks right now. Now it doesn't look clean or, or, or good looking right now. Um, but I'm going to make it look clean in just about a few seconds. So I'll hit delete image on all these images, because frankly, I don't need them, I don't want them, and they're not going to serve me for this uh, display approval process. So I'll just go ahead and get rid of these. Okay. And I'm going to start adding my own items and I'm going to hit add item here and I'm going to start adding these different items that I have. So in my case, I have um, 12 different images as an example. So I'll go here and hit add. And this is the place where I can add images, right? So if I click on anything where I can upload an image, I have a kind of like a media uploader section. All right. And I'm going to go over here and hit add folder and I'm going to call this my images, right? And hit submit. And this is going to be a folder that's going to house all the different images that I upload, right? For my portfolio. So I'll cl click, hold, drag and drop all of them in one shot. And it's going to take a little bit to upload all of these. I'll just go ahead and hit close here. If there's any image that didn't upload properly, I'll just go back, try to upload it or maybe change the sizing or something like that. Um, but it should be a okay. So we'll just give here, give it a few seconds for them to start uploading. You could see it already started and uh, let it all kind of complete and I'll be back once it completes. Okay, so I'm back. So we have some images that have been uploaded. Now let's go ahead and begin you adding them to our portfolio. So I'll just click on one of these images, right? I'll hit select and I'll just title this anything. So I'll title this go rogue, right? And um, it says here, show the title and the description. I really don't care if it shows the title or the description. I can remove that show images in a light box, which is great. And I'll explain what a light box is in just a minute. And then it says show the description in a pop up. I'm going to remove this as well. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit publish. Okay. So before I begin, I actually have to create a category and I, I kind of forgot about that. I always forget about that, but categories are essentially a segment of images. So in my categories, I'll just call this all images. That will be my only category, all images, right? And I'll hit confirm and I'll hit publish here, or rather I'll select, excuse me, I'll type in all images. I'll hit add and there we go. I'll hit confirm and then I'll hit publish. So I have my first image. Now, if I go ahead and hit website preview, right? Here is my first image. Now it seems a little cut off. We'll go ahead and fix that in just a minute, but once again, we finished the first uh, image. So let's go ahead and hit add image, click on this one, click Achilles, for example, and click remove show title, uh, remove show description categories, I'll select the all images category that we previously created. And then just type in Achilles here. And let me go ahead and make sure spelling is correct, and then hit publish. Okay, so I'm just going to keep doing that adding all my different images, 
right here right now and I'll be back once I complete all of them. Okay, so I added about the last image in my portfolio. I could add more, of course. I got, I think, like two more I can add. Uh, but let's just go ahead and stick with what we have for now. So total, we have 10 images. And notice here how it says all 10, and then we have all images 10. The reason why it says all images 10 here is because this is the collection that I made or the category that I made that's called all images. If I created, let's say, four different categories, it would have a different number for each one, and I created that all images category here. So that's kind of why it says that. But let's go ahead now, and after we have all of these, we can actually preview what it looks like. And you're going to see here, once we preview what it looks like, it's pretty like large in size. We can change some stuff. Now, let me explain to you very quickly what a light box actually is, because if you remember when we were creating this, we allowed the light box settings to be on. So it says show in images and light box. And we had that. Why do we enable the selection? Well, it's actually very simple. When somebody clicks on one of these images, I want it to open up the full image like this. That's exactly what a light box is. A light box is a pop up box that will show the image it doesn't have to be an image, but essentially just a pop-up that in our case, because it's an image, shows the image in its full size, right? So something like this, something like this, something like this, which is actually why it's a good idea to have high quality images, because once again, we want to be able to put our best foot forward when we apply to display, give us the best chance of getting accepted. So now let's go ahead and let's change some stuff up. Let's make things look good now. So let's go here to settings. And let's change some things. So if you notice, I want you to remember what these settings say. It says four columns. This is already selected, by the way. Four columns with spacing, without spacing, full width. So let me see if I can switch some stuff. So first of all, I like how the images are full width like this. I don't want my my uh, canvas of, of my portfolio to be constricted. If you want it to be constricted, it will look like this. So I'll go to settings. I'll select boxed and it will look kind of like that, and I'll hit save. And if I preview what that looks like, it will look something like this. It's up to you, you know, what you like. I personally like it filling up the large entirety of the page, so I'm gonna click full width here, okay? I'm gonna hit save. Now, I'm going to edit the other things, but if I select here, edit template page, there's a few things that I could do, all right? The first thing is, is I can edit the header, excuse me, the header, of the actual page. This is my current header. Instead of um, me having the word that says gallery here, because if you notice, if I preview, it says gallery the same way it is. This is the header. I want to edit this. I want to make this a little bit more clean. I want to change the way this looks. So instead of gallery, I'm going to call this portfolio, just like this. And I might even switch up the font. There, there's some basic fonts here. I can click save, right? But I can also go to my global styling button and change the fonts dramatically. So if I want to upload a font, I can do that. If I want to add a font, I can do that. So when I click add fonts, there's over a thousand Google fonts here that I can use, right? So all kinds of crazy fonts that are constantly being added. So um, if I want to use this uh, Machi Pop P1, I can use that. Or if I want to upload a custom font, I can do that as well. So to upload a custom font, I just click upload. I drag and drop the file, right? I usually use this one, click on it and upload the file. So let me just see if I have a font laying around that I can show you what I mean by that. Okay. So let me show you what I mean. So I have fonts right here. Um, this is an example of a font that I have. So I'll go over here click a folder and I just like my folders to be organized. So I'll label this fonts. I'll click here. And on this is where I'll upload my actual font. I'll drag it and drop it. And now the font has been uploaded to my actual website. I'll click on it. I'll hit select. And now it's the one that's selected here and I'll call this stars. I'll hit add. And there we go. I have my stars font added and I'll hit confirm. So once that's all added, I can refresh the page right? I can go into edit header, right? I can select this font. And if I click this little drop down, guess what? My stars font is right here. I'll use it, right? And you guys probably have seen this font before when I used it in my thumbnails. So it's nothing, you know, too crazy. Um, so there we go. I'm going to enlarge my um, text here and center it, center align. I'm going to actually 
set up a gradient in the background. So the way I'm going to do this is this header is referred to as a header block. And I'm going to hover my mouse over this block button. And I have these settings that emerge, right? So I like gradients. So I'm going to click gradient, which is just a transition of colors. And I'll just create a gradient real quick that I think would look good with my current portfolio. So I'll go over here to let's say this yellow actually let's go with a lighter color let's go with a um let's first of all pick the angle right because i want my first color to start somewhere here and then kind of change um let's go with a lighter kind of pink and then we'll transition that into a blue that is a uh, kind of more lighter toned blue right so something like that okay so you see this kind of transition that's what i'm going with you don't have to do this it's just simply what you want to do if you want to upload kind of your own background image you can do that as well if you don't have a background image and you want one i'll show you how to easily get one so hit add block click on this image section and go to image directory okay you don't even have to upload one and you can find various images here because rocket web builder is partnered with a company called unsplash which they have a bunch of different images there so realistically if let's just say i wanted this uh you know whatever these are i don't know if they're cells flowers whatever they are i think they're probably cells um like this scientific image i click on it it will load now into my account once it loads into my account i can use it as my background if i remove this um uh, what is it called gradient button so I guess it's a uh, flowers but there you go you get my point and I can select if I want it on the right center right the positioning of the image if I want it center top if I want it center bottom you know I can play with the different settings there if I want an overlay because this image might be too bright I just select overlay here and I darken the image you know something like this and I can keep it like that so it's, it's really up to you guys how you want to set up that header with the colors you know, everybody has their own choices. Nothing is wrong. Nothing is right. It's all up to you how you want to do it. So I'm just going to click here on the gradient button, uh, just like that. And I'm going to remove this background image. I don't need an overlay here. Um, I'm just going to keep my gradient the way it is. Okay. And I'll hit save. So now if I preview here, my, uh, site, this is kind of how it looks like right now. Not too bad. Right. So, um, we have this nice header color. We have this, these, uh, these boxes, these images that are clickable, and it looks really good. Let's go ahead and continue with what we're doing. Uh, I'm going to go over here into my pages, select pages, home page, and really, I don't need this page. This page is really just not needed for me. So I'm just going to go over here and I'm going to hit this little settings button. I'm going to hit delete, delete the page. Okay. I can't make, I can't delete it unless it's, if it's my home, which means I make, I have to make my portfolio page, my home. So I'll hit settings and I'll hit set as home page for my portfolio. And it's going to say, do you want to use this page as your home page? I'm going to click yes. And I'll hit save. Now I'll go over here to my home page and delete it. Okay. So there we go. So now our home page is our portfolio page. And so if I click on settings, right, I can still now kind of test some things. So here, what I like is I can test how, how different images look. So here we have a list, which is basically one image per block, just as you see here. So if I hit save, we can preview how that will look like. So notice how large it is. This is not really my style. This is way too big. Okay. Um, so that's that for that you know, setting. Um, we have two columns here, so you can separate your images into two. So I'll hit save and I'll show you that. Okay. Two kind of like this. Once again, not my style, but you know, everybody has their own choices on what they can do. Um, then we have the three column. Okay. So let's click on three column. We'll hit preview and you can see here, it looks a little bit better to me. Right. Uh, but once again, still not what I'm going for go here to settings we have four column or five column you guys already saw the four column i'll hit save on the five column let's go ahead and preview that and once again it still looks good just you know different styles for different folks so let's see what our next setting is it's called the masonry okay so i'll click on masonry i'll hit save and i'll preview and notice here how this is a different block sizes 
for each and, and every individual box, which is interesting. And I actually like this style a little more. It kind of fits it in an unnatural kind of way, just fits it randomly in different places. I like this style, right? So I can use that if I, if I want it. Um, I can also select no spacing. So if I want all the images to touch, I can do that. I can even select if I want this boxed or not. So I can hit save, I can hit preview, right? And you can see kind of how the images look. I think in my case, it's better for the images to look um, full, uh, excuse me, full width uh, with spacing. That's kind of the best approach. And I'll hit save here as well. Okay. And I'll just preview. And there we go. So we have that approach there. So now that you've selected kind of the style that you want on how your um, on how your uh, portfolio looks, you can change something. So let me explain. So this is now what's referred to as a portfolio page. And the nice thing about this is that you can add images and it'll kind of sort them in and, and it'll add a light box to them and things like that. But let's just say, for example, you don't like how some of your images are cut off. So you see how this is like cut off in the presentation view. There's a few things you could do. OK, so you don't have to necessarily use the portfolio page function. So this is the different pages and pop ups. And if you remember, there was a, a page here or a section that was called portfolio that we actually used here. If you don't want that, you can create a different page. So I can click page here and I can use empty page and I can call this my portfolio. And I can call this number two just as an example and I'll hit add. And instead of me utilizing the built in portfolio because it's cutting off the style of my images, I can build my own portfolio and it only takes a second to do so. So let me show you what I mean by that. So obviously I have my header here. OK, this is like a regular web page. And the first thing I would do is I would go over here to the resize container button and I would make this full width. That's the first thing I would do. And then I would go over here to the columns and I would select, let's say four columns, right? Or even three columns or even five columns. It really doesn't matter. Um, but actually let's go with four columns for now. Okay. And what I would do is I would upload my images here. So for example, I would take an image box, by the way, these are the widgets. Sorry. I, I went too fast on that. Let me hit add widget here. And these are different things that I can add to my web page. So in this case, I have my image. I'll just drag and drop my image, click select on the image here, go to my folder where I uploaded all my images and select my first image. And there we go. I have my first image. And this is showing the image from its entirety from top to bottom. I can make the image a lot larger, kind of like this. If, if that's kind of what you like, make that a little bit larger just like that. And if I really want a style to the image, I can add a shadow to it too. I can create an outer shadow, right? So like in black, for example, or even in blue or whatever, but you can see how the shadow now is emerging from the actual image. It's just another way of presenting the image guys. So, you know, just another style. And that is an example of how you can add, start adding to the portfolio. So I'm going to do this here with you guys live just to show you what I mean. And I wanted to kind of show you this trick as well. Instead of clicking add widget here and image and then dragging and dropping every time, what you could do to speed things up is after you create that first image, you just click on it and you hit copy. You see how it says copy widget. You just click copy. And now if you click here, there's the image, the same exact element that's copied. So I could just take this image, drag it and drop it and boom. Right now you might say, why would I want that? I need a different image. Well, absolutely. We can click on the image we want to change, hit edit image, select the actual file, right? Like let's say this Medusa image and then boom, it changes. So it's essentially just saving a little bit of time per click, right? That's all it is. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to go to my copied widget, add it. And then there we go. Right. And I'm going to hit edit and I'm going to select this. And I'm going to select the image and there we go. OK, now notice how this one came out looking different than these. Why is that? It's because of the spacing. If you notice here, there's spacing of 2% uh, within each block. So this is spacing. This is spacing. But here there is no spacing. If I want to create spacing, I just move this that way and I move this that way. 
just like this, this blue bar, and now they're close to about the same size. So, it's, you know, sometimes you have to like finagle with the image, make it a little smaller, a little bit bigger, but there you go, it's about the same, all right? And so this image was default a little bit larger than, you know, the other images. So sometimes I have to play around with the spacing a little bit more, but every single image kind of fits the same standard right now what do i do when i want to add more images this is the footer i don't add any content in the footer or in the header i just simply go over here to my block and i copy the whole entire block right and then i have the whole block copied which is a container and there we go we have the second one now i just go over here i hit edit image and i select my new image let's say this is my image i hit select and there it is Let's say this is the image that I want to change here. I select one I didn't pick yet, so I'll pick this one. I'll select this one, select here, select this, right? And select here, go over here, hit edit image, select, uh, let's see, did I pick this one all right? I don't think I did. Um, but then here, okay, what I would do is, let's just first of all make sure this is all nice and uniform in terms of the same size. And then what I would do now is I would go over here and I already have this block duplicated. I would duplicate it and I would delete this image, right? Because I only have 10 in this case. So I only have two more that I would need to add. I would add some spacing between this block and that block, right? And then I would go over here and add my last two images. So let's say this is, let's see where my last image is. Um, or did I add it already? I don't think I did. So let's select this one. I believe this is one of the last ones. Yep. Okay. So we'll click on this and we'll click edit here and we'll find this last image, which is this one. And there we go. So this is pretty much completed now. So let me go ahead and make this a little bit smaller. And this is just once again, another viewpoint as to how to create a portfolio. It depends on what you like and what your style is. Some people might look at this and say, you know what, this one's better, but I do have to, you know, make it a little bit more uniform, fix some of the spacing errors here. So for example, I might go here, you know, make this create some more space here, uh, take this actual image and um, change the, uh, excuse me, the settings. So I could, you know, drag some a spacer. So I'll go over here, hit plus, add a space here. We'll see what happens there. You know, play with the settings, hit save, preview, you know, different things like that. I might have to do that. Um, or, right, I can use the portfolio. So the original portfolio. If there's a situation where I don't like this after creating the second one, I can go over here, right? Make this page the home page, right? So show settings, set as home page, hit yes, right? Hit save, and then delete the old one. So I'll delete the old one. And that's kind of good for me because I like to reduce confusion and just label this the new portfolio page. I'll just call this my portfolio, hit save, okay? And then here I have some SEO settings. If I really want you know, to, to play around with that, I could do that as well. The nice thing about uh, Rocket Web Builder is the integration of the AI. So if I ever wanna add some text, the AI can literally write it for me. So for example, let's just use a, a segment here as like a block. So for example, if I was adding something here, right, as like some text and some images, I can click on this button, which is the text, right, double click, and I click this AI button here, and I can click generate text, and I can say, for example, give me a title for the orange juice I am selling for a health shot, daily take, I don't know, something like that, right, and so I'll hit submit, and it will create a title for me, you know, basically we'll do exactly what the AI is trained to do. So um, if you were talking to, let's say, GPT, it says boost your daily, uh, boost your day with our daily health shot orange juice. So I'll make a title like that. Now, obviously, it's easy to create your own titles and things like that. Um, but this is more beneficial when it comes down to the blog section. So if I go over here, create add new, select blog. Um, if I click add post, I can literally have the AI write whole blogs for me, just telling you what to do section by section. But anyways, uh, that's on a whole different tangent. We don't need to get into that. I'm going to delete this blog uh, and just literally stay here on the portfolio for now. Um, 
Now that this is taken care of, let's just go ahead here, add a logo, right? Um, if you don't have an image based logo, you can just literally create a text based logo and the logo doesn't even have to really exist. I mean, if you really don't want it to, um, but uh, for example, I can delete this, right? Like if I, if I don't want to add a logo, I can do that and I can delete this button here and I could just go over here and hit add text, right? Or excuse me, sorry about that. Hit add uh, widger, what widget, excuse me. And uh, actually, you know, what? I will use the logo and I'll just call this my portfolio. Okay. And I'll switch the actual font. Okay. I was so used to the other example and I can enlarge, um, stay on the page. Let me hit save. And there we go. So this is an example of how, it how it would look now, obviously I would delete this, but like I said, you can see how it looks. So I'll hit settings here. Um, I can change font colors, font size. So let's say I want this to be bigger. I want the portfolio to have more size to it. Kind of like that. Hit save, uh, you know, different settings that I can apply, but I'll go over here, hit delete. And there we go. We have our own portfolio. If I don't want this to be visible, this footer area, I'll just hit hide. And of course, if I want to add things like a contact us page I, or a contact us section, rather, I can go over here, hit, you know, the contact us. So in this case, opt slash contact, um, let's just say I want to add this contact us section, right? I have my contact us section here. And it's actually a good idea to add a contact us for a portfolio because it makes you look more professional, right? That you're always taking work and things like that. So for example, I would move this a little bit downward. We have contact us, obviously change the information here. Say something like, hello, please contact me for any work related needs, something like that. Um, and this would be anybody who fills this out it would be automatically sent to your email. So the way to do that is hit settings. And if you look here, you have like this different form settings. And uh, instead of showing a thank you, or yeah, you could definitely send you a thank you message. Um, so after somebody fills it out, you'll say thank you. But uh, here, send notification to, you just write your own email. So if my email is autopilot passive income at gmail.com, right? And I'll hit save, right? Whenever somebody fills this out, some it's automatically going to send me an email. Um, also to that, right. And, and I want to show you guys an example. I'll just fill it out and I'll give you uh, an example of what I'm talking about here. Um, if I was to do this myself, right. So give myself a name here, give myself a fake email, right. Subject. Okay. And a message. If for some reason I'm not checking my email frequently, but I'm always logging into the, my website, I hit submit. It says, thank you. Right. As the website owner, I can see who, who emailed me within my CRM. So a CRM stands for a customer relations manager. I can hit emails and automations and I can click messages and I can see here who sent me a message and there will be like a list. And this is literally what I just filled out right now as a user. So I can kind of get, you know, access to stuff like that. So, okay. So at this point, the portfolio is pretty much built. You have your contact us, you have your actual artwork. It's pretty much built. The only thing left now is to publish this website. Uh, the nice thing is you don't have to necessarily buy a domain name. If I go over here to website settings and I go to domains, my current domain is autopilot passive income one dot rocket web builder.com. You don't have to change the, I mean, you could change this, right? You could change instead of autopilot passive income one for you, it's something else. Um, you can change this so I can call this, um, uh, magic art life, you know, if I really want to and hit change and say, yes, it will take me there. Magic art life rocky web builder.com. I can do that. Um, but you do have to, uh, publish. Well, you don't have to, but you, you're going to have to publish your site for the, uh, application process. And when I say publish, what happens is, is if somebody goes to magic artlife.com.rocketwebbuilder.com right now. Let's go ahead and copy this. Um, and let's go to the web page. I'll hit plus here. And let me see. Actually, let me go to an incognito tab uh, so that we've never been there before, right? If I hit enter, right, it will take me here right now. But notice here, it looks 
like a official website, right? And it's perfectly fine. It's reachable, but it will only be reachable for 14 days. Okay. So the free trial, if you look here, lasts 14 days. My account is currently on trial. And there's a reason why we deleted a lot of the other pages that we had before. And there's reasons why we started with a blank website. The reason why is because we can sign up for the cheapest plan called the builder plan or the blogger plan, sorry. And the blogger plan, which is this one here, allows up to two pages. So technically, right, if I set up a blog with this, right, that is an example of a second page. So if I set up a blog, that's a second page. Um, if I have my portfolio, which is the first page, that is page number one. So if I add a second page right now, like a regular page like this, and I call this whatever, and I just hit add, that's my two pages right there. So I can go over here, hit upgrade, select the bloggers plan, and boom, all I have to do is pay for it. Now the cost here is either $13 a month or 15 a month, depending on if you want to pay yearly or monthly. Obviously, you save some money if you pay yearly. Uh, but monthly is nice because if you're just using this for display, it's no commitment. You don't have to actually commit to the platform. Uh, you can pay for a month, get accepted, and then cancel your membership after. Uh, speaking of memberships, in order for you to get accepted to multiple websites, not just display, there are places where you have to submit a portfolio. So, for example, a lot of the stock photography sites that I was applying to, a lot of them want to see a current portfolio, right? And so you can send them links to your current portfolio. There's ways to do that. Um, various different websites do require portfolios. They want to see previous work. And having your own website that's stable, that's known, is a place for that. So you don't have to actually buy a website domain name. You can use the current one and they can just click and access whatever they have there. All you have to do is just make sure that when you submit your website, it falls within that free range. So you don't have to pay the monthly cost for this website. Or if you don't even want to worry about that, because what happens is if this 14 days is up and then they go to review the, the, um, uh, the actual website and the 14 days are up, they're not going to be able to access it, right? So then they're going to deny you, obviously. Um, what you can do is you can try your best to uh, try to apply as fast as you can and have this created for you. Um, but at the same time, once again, sometimes they'll say, oh yeah, we'll review it in a few days, but they don't tell you how many days it will actually take to review. Sometimes it could take two weeks. Sometimes it could take three weeks. Sometimes it could take 15 days. And if you're in a position where you're going to, you know, apply and 15 days out, they actually check, right? Um, your website is going to be locked out. So currently, like I said, the website looks like this, right? So anybody can access it within 14 days. It's literally a normal website. Um, however, and it says here made with, you know, Rocket Web Builder. Um, after those 14 days, it will, it will not show this at all. It will have this message that will show like, you know, this website needs to be paid for or trial or whatever. Right. So that's kind of something you want to pay attention to. So like I said, this is probably the cheapest route to go with this. A lot of people buy like yearly memberships to Hostinger or Hostinger or something like that because they think it's cheap hosting. Uh, if you want to go with like no commitment, just literally pay for one month and that's it. Uh, this is the best way to go and the cheapest way to go. But you have up to two pages, which just simply means two pages right here. So if I create a blog, and this is actually a little hack real quick. If I go over here and hit blog, I can create an infinite amount of pages on my blog. Um, so I can click like a post here, call this the first post. I got to add a category. Let's just add a category real quick. Okay, just to satisfy the website needs, hit update, boom, that's my first, right? I can go ahead, add another 10 of these, it won't matter, I can add an infinite number, right? So um, that's just something I want to point out real quick, is that I can add at literally as many as I want here. So one of the smartest things that I tell people who start blogs 
is when you go start a blog, start a blog with the cheapest plan. It's the blogger's plan. You can create a blog which can hold literally an infinite number of blog posts, and then you can have another page on top of that, which is where you can sell a product or something like that. So uh, even though this has to do with portfolio, um, <clears throat> You know, you can do whatever you want. I mean, it doesn't have to be a blog, but you get the point. And that's kind of why, like I said, I showed you how to delete those pages earlier just to make sure you fit the needs for that uh, blogger's plan, which is the cheapest plan. All right, guys. So that's all for now. So uh, that's essentially how to create a portfolio. Very, very simple, very easy to use, uh, very clean looking. You let me know, do you like the first style portfolio better or the second one? I think the second one is a little bit more suitable for most people, uh, but you guys let me know, all right? I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you guys for watching. Go ahead, apply to Display, get approved, go make that money, and uh, yeah, I'll talk to you guys soon, all right? Peace out, bye.